Hi there, my name is Daniel LaPlante, and I am here with product owner Joe Marquardt to discuss some of the new functionality being developed for our upcoming winter release. Specifically, we'll be looking at tools that will help support processes around both letting and publishing proposals. Welcome, Joe. Hi, Daniel. Thanks for having me. Great to have you here, Joe. So, what is some of the functionality that you're planning on sharing with us today? Well, we have a lot of functionality coming up in release six, but I think what is most exciting is probably the letting calendar and the addendum process. But additionally, we'll have project sequencing, advertisements, and proposal publishing functionality. Oh, awesome. Okay, well, that all sounds exciting. Um, but let's first start with something you mentioned, the letting calendar. Uh, tell me more about that. What is it for? I think the letting calendar is a great way for everyone to view what the letting activities are across the text.agency. agency. So the benefit of the letting calendar is that districts can easily and quickly identify when statewide letting events are occurring. Additionally, they can see when their own letting events are occurring, and they can see when other districts are having letting events. This will allow them to visually see when they should be scheduling their letting events. That's awesome, Joe. Uh, so far, I already love how clear and easy it is uh, to see how you're going to be able to keep those things organized. Can you tell me a little bit about how the letting calendar is really going to help users uh, do their work differently in a new way? I think it's going to allow the agency to communicate over the calendar as to what types of events and when these types of events are happening. Currently, the calendar functionality is focused on statewide letting and district letting, but we're adding in the required pre-bidder conference events as well in the future. That's terrific. Um, I know one of the primary goals for Tech.Connect as a system altogether uh, was to increase transparency. So I think this is just another way everybody is going to be able to see what they need all in one place. Joe, uh, you also mentioned something called the addendum table. What exactly does that do? Historically, when we were building out our engineer's estimate, the estimate specifications list is built alongside with the estimate. Now, at some point, the project builds a proposal and the proposal is published, at which point the estimate table is now locked down for changes. You cannot make changes within this table. What we designed is an addendum estimate table down below. Within the addendum estimate table, you'll be able to enter new items should you want to add them to your engineer's estimate, or you can go to your original estimate table up here, select an item, and copy it to your addendum table. This would allow you to make changes or deletions from your original engineer's estimate. Once you have completed the addendum table, it will pre-populate information into the addendum request form. It will pre-populate your project information, your total net value change on your contract, and auto decide if you need a DBE or SBE goal reevaluation. That will be submitted into the workflow and processed for the appropriate approvals for your addendum request. Joe, I love how smooth that looks, uh, especially because I know the entire proposal build can be a complicated process. So anything to help streamline it is an automatic win. Can you tell me a little bit about how this is gonna benefit end users who are actually involved in this proposals process? Yes, this addendum process that we have moved to does two things for the end users that I think are important. One is that it automates a lot of the information so that the end users are not having to constantly re-enter their information in several places. That's annoying. The other thing that it accomplishes is that it's going to guarantee that the items that were included in the addendum request that was approved by the agency actually get built into the addendum. Historically, the mainframe system was very manual and there was the ability to either omit items or include additional items that were not in the addendum approval, at which point when those built into addendum documents that were published, the agency would need to take an additional step to make sure that that those items got approved. We're eliminating that with this structure. Excellent. So by tracking and automating some of that process, we eliminate room for those kinds of problematic errors. Absolutely. Awesome. I know that was a big part of the goal. Well, you're right, then. These are definitely some exciting developments. I don't think anyone's going to mind that you're making their lives easier. And there we have it, folks. That's just a taste of what Text.Connect will have to offer for end users involved in publishing proposals and letting. Please stay tuned for more, and please reach out to us at text.connect at text.gov for more information.